Hello, hello everybody, Hagstar Hunter here, and welcome to a new Let's Play campaign on my channel. This is the Realm of the Wood Elves DLC for Total War Warhammer, the Season of Revelations story campaign, and I'm going to be playing as Orion for my legendary lord. As you can see here, he is the king in the woods. He's also a powerful melee and missile fighter, and has a powerful battle ability, Hounds of Orion. These additional starting units include Deepwood Scouts, the Wild Riders, and the Eternal Guard. His Lord effects are that he enables the unique Wild Hunt event. Upkeep and recruitment cost is minus 50% for Wild Riders units. Leadership plus 10 during forest battles. And you have Elite Forest Spirit units cost Amber to recruit. As the uh, Lord of the Elves there, it's harder to get the forest spirit units. So we're going to be playing on very hard difficulty in this campaign. So let's get on with it. Start the campaign. Greetings, Orion, King in the Woods. You awake to a world sorely in need of you. Athaloran lies broken and in ruin. A sickness lies upon the forest, sapping its strength. With it, many great halls have fallen to darkness in your absence, and the once mighty Oak of Ages is now a bleak shadow of its former glory. Though you are born into fleeting life, Orion, through your strength, the forest will heal. This is the time of rebirth for Ariel, for Kernus, and for Atal Loren. So here we are on the campaign map. As you can see, it just shows up a little bit of how they play on the Wood Elves, the new faction, of course. Let's read it out. As Athel Lauren's beating heart, the Oak of Ages must reach its highest level. Use Amber to upgrade the Mighty Oak. If the Oak of Ages is lost, you'll immediately lose the campaign. Amber is produced each time a settlement is occupied, a quest battle is completed, and whenever a military alliance is forged, occupying a major settlement will prove provide more Amber than through an alliance. Wood Elves can occupy any settlement. Amber is consumed by buildings, technologies, and units. Having a negative supply of Amber will cause penalties for your entire faction. And just a multiplayer campaign note, Amber is not received from treaties with human factions. There we go, let's click off the advisor there, telling us the state of play in this story campaign. Orion has awoken into disarray in the woods of Athel Lauren. So we've got an enemy right here, 
Rasuri Zu, a warmaker, a lovely beastman tribe. With only six units, what the do we have? Calls. We have our legendary lord and we have six extra units. So we've got one extra. Shield I'm tempted just to move Lauren slightly forward going. and recruit some more units, which I would say probably one archer, two spears. Let's take a look at the King's Glade. I think we're going to go straight into building something that will help our income. I want to make sure we can keep on top of that. Uh, yep, yeah, let's build the Trickster's Gallery 2. It's two turns for each. Okay, and we have a quick look at the objectives. So ensure that the following buildings have been constructed. The Oak of Age is thriving. As you can see here, as you upgrade with amber as you go through the campaign, which you need 46 pieces of amber to complete. We've currently got three. Okay. Take a look at technology. You've got some technology that doesn't need amber and some that does. Some that do need amber, of course, are going to be pretty decent, like Maflan, Lord of the Deeps, plus 400% income from ports. That sounds pretty good to me. Immunity to electrician. So yeah, spending spending money on some of these technologies will definitely be worth it if we want it later down the line. But obviously, we're gonna go straight for Mara Heg the Crone, which will give us ward save and leadership during forest battles. Sounds good to me. So you got your faction summary as normal, telling us who we're at war with and what do we have and our effects. Take a look at the offices. So this is the Elven Council, unique to Orion, legendary lord. So obviously, as we get new lords and uh, generals later on, we can put them into office. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the first turn. We're recruiting, we're building already. We've got a fair amount of money and amber, so we're going to leave it as that, and we're going to end the turn. So here we go, very quick end turn there, the got our extra units, let's go straight to attack no this warherd. They're going to retreat of course, the hunt it's fine with me, let's Rise. push in and fight. Oh this is going to be absolutely juicy, so I'm going to fight this, obviously it is our first battle of this campaign, so I will do it. Well, I've got quite a bit of forest, a bit of open areas too. Let's have some fun. So the Battle of Talithia will be a great battle indeed. We've got a couple of archers, we've got our cavalry, our wild hunt cavalry, which we're going to have to get more later on. They've got one Centagore calf, two Ungor archers, two Ungor raiders, and obviously their lord there. Definitely going to be good. Okay, let's have a look at the battle map. What do we have? Very heavily wooded area. Obviously we've got Wood Elves influence with some rune stones. I think they're rune stones, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, we've got Vanguard units. So we'll keep them up there. Obviously I've got my cavalry too that can also Vanguard deploy. So I want to keep them up there because I do have Centigors. But yeah, I'm going to have to deploy together, I think. There we go. Start the battle, and I'll just slow motion it and we can have a quick look at the units that we've got so far. Obviously the Eternal Guard without shields. Got some uh, the, the Glade Guard archers. Okay, obviously I'm not that knowledgeable on these names, so you'll forgive me for that. I'll try and get on. Obviously Orion, standing tall and proud. Obviously the Eternal Guard with shields there, looking lovely. Let's take a look over at our archers. Ready and waiting in vanguard deployment in the forest. Obviously you've got the lovely deer wild hunt cavalry here, looking magnificent. Okay, let's press play. We need to get our forces that are over here, straight up and across. So we're not firing at anybody yet, we're just kind of waiting. Obviously it is a battle that we just need to fight to the end. There's no timer, so we've got plenty of time. 
We don't really have to make my units get tired, but we'll see. I'm going to get Orion up on top of the hill. He should be in range to fire his, uh, or throw his spear at Rusizu there, but probably not. No, maybe not. We'll move up. Come on, Orion. You can do it. Force him to come to us. So here you are, you got the Hounds of Orion Vortex spell and the Hawk's Talon Bombardment spell. Here we go. Fire! Obviously, Archer's firing on the move is spectacular. Love it. All right, here we go. Let's move Orion back. My cavalry needs to come round. Let's draw a line and get them through. Hopefully, my Eternal Guard will brace against these Centigors. Oh, they're coming through pretty hard. Not good. I'm going to have to charge right into them. All right, let's get... Everybody fighting. There's no point in waiting around. Right, I'll get these uh, spears around instead. Get me archers all up on this hill so they can fire well. While riders should be able to easily take care of the center doors, but I'm just gonna have to pull through. Orion, obviously, mm, yeah, you've got Rusu and Warmaker there. Not great. Start using some of these units, um, spells should I say, that are unique to Orion. Hounds there, working pretty similar to Gehenna's Golden Hounds, Vortex spell, and then the Bombardment coming in, which you see. A lot of damage on those archers there. Let's surround the enemy. Come on, Wild Riders, get out of there. Don't want them to be lost. Toggle guard mode. I just want to bombard the crap out of them. Get the wild riders out. They are broken. Might get Orion into melee as well. Wild riders. Get them moving. It's a lot of uh, magical arrows. I think they fire magical arrows. They look it don't they? Yeah, definitely magical in some respect. Let's push through. Let's watch them charge in. These archers here running away. Deer's hopping. Come on. Where are you going? Charge. There we go. Send them flying. Blood. Oh, just gibs and guts everywhere. Brilliant. Completely smashed. And victory! I think we automatically kill him anyway, so we'll leave it at that. So obviously I lost more of my spearmen than I would have hoped, but overall not too bad. About half my cavalry. Not as great as I would have hoped, but yeah, decisive victory anyway. That's cool. So yeah, we lost 114 men to their 370, but obviously since we forced them to retreat in the first place, they are completely gone. So we don't have to worry about this small tribe in our heartland. Decisive victory. We get 342 gold for that. A rank for Orion, lovely. And we can release the captives to gain a little bit of extra money, because if you can kill captives, but it's only one turn for leadership plus four, so it's not that much profitable for us. So we'll just uh, sell them off. Next thing I want to do is colonize Telethar ruins, which I will have to do the next turn. So yeah, we'll do that. King in the woods. Upgrade Orion. Let's have a look here. So I've got the Horn of the Wild Hunt quest, the quest for the Cloak of Isha. And the Spear of Kurnus as well. Got Asherian's Command unique to Orion, which missile damage plus 5% for all forces faction wide. Got a couple of uh, interesting traits for him personally, and then you've got ones for the Lord's Army. Nice. Oh, we can also passive ability the Eye of Kurnus, missile damage plus 12%. Augment. Oh, nice. Call of the Woods. 
merely attack plus 8% augment around the area. That's pretty good. I'll have to get these early on in the campaign. I'm thinking it's a toss up between the Shurian's Command for the missile damage early on or the Ever Reaching Tendrils for campaign movement range. I think usually when you start out, you always go for the campaign map movement. So we'll we'll just check that and I live to serve leave that everyone. there. Okay, so we can't obviously recruit anybody yet, even though this is part of the same region because of that. So we'll just end turn. The halls are secure once more, Orion. But the larger question still remains. Who is to blame for the damage done? Mayhap our neighbors, the Bretonians? or the ever-festering orcs from the mountains. Whoever is responsible, we must push forth from the forests to seize their lands in retribution. Okay, sorry about the cut there, just some background noise I wanted to get rid of. So we're back, and we need to find out who is responsible for the destruction of a fair amount of our fair forest. Master of the wild Let's go in and colonize this settlement for... Oh, I'll gain some extra amber. Yeah, it cost me a bit of money and men, so... But it's worth it. It is worth it. Let's build up, repair the tree. Because we don't have any castles here in Athaloran. Just uh, tree homes. A copse. Which then goes to a glade, a hollow, a hall. A great hall. Obviously, the Oak of Ages is the greatest hall of all. Okay, cool. So that's what we're going to do for now. Oh, we should be able to recruit some war dancers. Got 1,600 income per Lord turn. So let's do that. Let's get some war dancers on the move. Warherd of the Shadow Grave have been obliterated. Great. Some war dancers into Orion's army. Obviously, they are quite a lot of upkeep early on. I mean, 200 is not the end of the world compared to their counterparts, 125 unshielded eternal guard. But the next thing we want to do is get the Azrai armory, Azrai forge buildings, which will be in a turn after we've rebuilt Talithar. Unless we wanted to. How much population? I don't have any population surplus. Okay, so that's why. That's fine. Got turn five. We've got technology research. Mari Heg the Crone. Lovely jubbly. Constructed the cops. Nice. Got a pop surplus, but obviously we need two to do well. So we're going to want to straight away go for the forge, which is... Which is, which is, which is... Where is it? I say go straight for the forge, we can't. Not yet. Um, Alright, what I'll do instead is I will build the grapevines here. I will destroy those grapevines. Recruitment cost for dryads. I've not got dryads on Shrieking yet, so I'll go for Vowl and Maker income from all buildings. Yeah, we'll do that. I should have realised. A oh. little bit of diplomacy with one of the other Wood Elf Realm factions. They want a trade agreement for, well, probably pitiful, but we might as well. It's any, any little Riotous else. Riotous beastmen have been spotted near our borders, my lord. Doubtless intent on spreading their chaotic brutality. They are surely responsible for defiling our halls. It is what they live for. They appear now leaderless, but still single-mindedly bent on a vision of pure destruction. The threat they pose is ever-increasing. Do not underestimate them. They are the enemy of all civilization. You must confront these ravenous beasts and put them to rout. Put them to rout I shall. The Great Council. And we gain treasury income. Lovely. Okay, so here we are. We're going to build the Azrai Forge, which means I can build the Eternal Guard with shields. I need to get the Azrai Armory to get the Wild Riders with shields and the War Dancers with the Azrai Spear. But we can do that later on. That's cool. I am tempted to build a Glade with this, but I want to be able to get the Hollow in eight turns. So we'll leave that as that. 
I thirst for the hunt. But I think I'm going to want to... Oh god, my income has plummeted. Oh yeah, it's because we need to build the... Yeah, one turn and we're back to relatively normal income turns. Right, Master so... I think I'm going to want another war dancer. So. And then another archer. And yeah, I might as well do another eternal guard to round it off. I'm going to need to get eternal guards with shields soon, however. United against us, Modron. Uh-oh. So, who are the Modron? Blade of the Eternal Midnight. That doesn't exactly sound very friendly to me. But yeah, we're at war with those guys. The Whomever they are. Yes, yeah, so we've got plus 900 now. So... Oh, and I can get these thermal guards with shields. So I'll recruit those and carry on and see what happens, because I'm pretty sure the beastmen are going to be on their way. So what I'll do is I'll kind of go over here, so I might be able to see a little bit more, and go into ambush mode. Because we've got to defend the Oak of Ages, which is obviously the centre of Athel Lauren. That's right. Asur Trushi. Carried by elegantly hewn ships, our cousins have travelled from the distant lands of Ufwan to visit us. After so many long years, they have finally deigned to visit their forest brethren. Is this a gracious visit or an omen of arrogance? Do you consider this a slight or a blessing? Will you grant them an audience with the Elven Council? So, if we let them see... We get an audience of elves for four turns, which gives me income from trade, plus 25%, but we're only really trading with one faction, and it's not much. Or deny their audience. So, public order minus four, all provinces for four turns. For a bit of an extra boost? Yeah, that's pathetic, but whatever. We'll take it for now. Lord of the Asrei. Right, so we've almost got a full stack here, and could probably go for more war dancers or more shield versions. Hmm. Yeah, let's round it off. Two, two shield versions. Go for it. Festival of the Equinox, interlopers into the Trixus woods have been caught and brought before you to face justice. The sentence is clear. Death. Yet before you can pass judgement, one of the captains issues a brazen challenge. If you can last one hour in a battle with a war dancer, then he and his friends go free. If not, he accepts your sentence. It is a bold request, but one you have no obligation to accept. Take the wager. Unit experience plus four for war dancer unit recruits. Punished. Five turns for leadership plus four. Kill him. I live Kill to serve Ariel. I will. Since we're at war with these guys, I'm actually going to be quite aggressive. Setting forth. Come fight me. Or I swear at war no. with that nation. I might need to retreat. Oh, here we go. Beast Path Interception, okay, yes, let's do it. Fight the battle. Okay, so we're on a beast path, not exactly incredibly friendly to our forests, but we're still in a forest technically, I think, so might not be too bad. Yeah, we've got a big blob in the way, but we're gonna, we're gonna go in and we're gonna form some basic lines. Not really too bothered about using Vanguard deployment on this one. We just want to get ready and go for it. Ready for the hunt. Armed and ready. Wild riders. Yeah, let's do that. Like, not exactly the best formation, but it will serve purpose. 
for now. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to put it on fast forward because we want to sort it out. Get there as quickly as possible. By walking, of course. The March of the Wood Elves, crushing the beastmen in their own beast paths. Love it. They look so good. I can only imagine the elven units that will come out later on in Warhammer's life will be just as magnificent. The High Elves and the Dark Elves. But they're most likely to be in a, another iteration of Warhammer. So yeah, let's put it back on fast forward. Definitely want to save our energy and move forward because I'm pretty sure we lose if time runs out. But obviously my battle timer is on an hour, so we've got plenty of time to go. Although I don't really want Orion to be rushing off by himself, stomping ahead. Edge strong. So he could easily be intercepted by some enemy forces. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. They might not even advance, but there's obviously more Beastman Force than we can see here. There we go, he's in position. The rest of my army is coming up. They haven't moved an inch. Okay. That's fine, we'll get up into position and then we'll advance forward. And crush them into the ground. Yeah, almost there. Wonder if that's going to force them to advance. Probably not. Yeah, get everyone into position. Oh, here we go. They're on their way. Archers will fire on the move. That's brilliant. If you're not quite ready for the enemy, you can just sort it out. It's, it's pretty good. Right, I want to make sure that they can't sort that out. Yeah, that's fine. Right. War dancers. I'm going to want you to come around this side. Go around then, I guess. And then, yeah, I might as well go straight in to help out. Move forward. Oh, here we go. Some Chaos Warhounds to deal with. Right, where are my wild riders? Let's get them on the move, too. Let's get Orion up. I'm going to bombard the enemy. Oh, put a Vortex spell right on here. Yes! Do a lot of damage against these beastmen. Filth. Lovely. Doing a fair amount of damage to the beastmen. Probably doing little to none to my own units. That's exactly what you want from a Vortex spell. Right, let's get these guys round. Come on, war dancers! You've got a job to do. Ah, let's get them across. See the war dancers going. I've got charging in. Jewel blades. I'm gonna do a lot of damage against these beastmen scum. Yeah. Okay. So got my cavalry coming in move them around. I want to get a good rear charge or go straight after the Chaos Warhounds. Come on, Wild Riders. We've got a job to do. Oh, here we go. The Beastmen are starting to crumble away as expected. Let's charge the Chaos Warhounds here. Smash them into the dirt. There we go. Yeah, it's fine. They're broken. Broken, broken, broken. Carry on, we just need to break through on this flank now. And we'll be sorted. Obviously, we're trying to kill Fordart. Might go help out with that. Oh, there's no point doing this spell. Let's carry on. Going to melee. Watch Orion go in. I think he still uses his uh, spear as a throwing spear sometimes in melee. Poke. Obviously, it's going to still damage us. Victory! 
Nice beast path victory there. Let's end the battle. Don't need to carry on. When you kill an enemy in an interception battle such as this, you completely wreck them. Oh nice, one of my war dancer unit getting 162 kills. Brilliant, my wild riders getting 104. Obviously my infantry units are not exactly the best. But hopefully we can upgrade them and sort them out later on in this campaign. There we go, decisive victory. Gain a juicy bit of loot. 1.6k. A weapon, sword of striking. Plus 4% charge bonus and plus 2 melee attack. Lovely. And was that a level up for Orion as well? We'll definitely release the captives. Gain some money. It does look like Modrin is coming to attack us though. It is the case. Can we retreat? We can retreat. I'm going to want to do that because they look a bit more powerful than me right now. Okay, so they're backing off. Good. Yeah, I don't want to uh, overstep my bounds here. And who are you? Bardark killed in battle. Well, just striking gained. Technology research Vol the Maker. Income from all buildings plus 5% all regions. Love the jubbly. Decisive victory there. A right gain for Orion. So I think I probably will go for. Ooh, the missile of damage. Mm. Yeah. The Eye of Kurnos, and then we can do the Serenus Command and we can buff missile damage even Lord more. I'm going to use a world route, so I'm going to jump right back into my lands. The there we go. I'm safe. But who are these guys? The Edrael of Equos Karavok. Karavok, Karavok. Is that you? Let's take a look at Karavok, actually. See who they are at war with. They're at war with the War Hurt. And... Arguilon. Oh, they're up, right up there. Isn't that Durthu? Isn't that Durthu's faction? I think it is. Okay. Could go for Ishad the Mother for growth for 15 old provinces, but that will spend one of our amber. Eleni, Lord of the Destruction, but yes, we're not using Triad or Treekin or Treeman units yet. Gladriel, Lady of the Mist. Yeah, we can get diplomatic relations with Bretonian kingdoms, I think. Might be worthwhile going for. Right, I'm going to turn and see what happens. I'm assuming the beastmen are going to come back in. Faction destroyed, did they just get killed? Nice. Voice of the Forest. Those way watchers that become attuned to the forest every motion soon find they prefer the company of trees to their own kindred. These Waystalkers are the most expert of hunters, singularly dedicated to the winds of Ethel Lauren. And we've got a new hero recruited. Action has been destroyed. Wonder who that is though. Okay. Defender of Athelon. So I'm wondering if we should put him into our army. I, live to I think we should. And get rid of one of the poor unspear units. Okay, let's do that. Let's disband you. Place you in the army, embed hero, boom. That's what we like to see. I thirst for the hunt. Okay, I'm just gonna chill in the province there. Two turns to surplus. In my words, the words of the faithless. Seldom what do these guys want? Their lips. Come on, you want a defensive alliance? You're at war with, you're at war with Sithril. Um, I don't really want to be at war with multiple Wood Elves factions right now. 
Even though it's just a defensive alliance, it will piss off that faction down in the bottom here. Peace negotiated between these two factions, okay. One turn for the surplus. Let's push right into that. What a world's response. They've declared war on me. Okay. Right. Heavens of the Underworld. The Azrai wish to erect a new shrine within Athel Lauren to give praise to the gods they so faithfully serve. Yet the question is posed. To whom should the shrine be dedicated? Two frontrunners are Assyrian Arcane, yet ultimately the choice is yours. You wish to honour the Phoenix King, Assyrian, the wise and just ruler of the Elven Pantheon, or his brother Cain, harsh and ruthless god of battle. Inca for all buildings plus 10 for 4 turns, melee attack plus 8 all forces for 4 turns. That would be great, but are we going to begin battle with 4 turns? I don't believe so, so we'll go for Assyrian. Boost our income. The hunter. Protector of the oak. Right, I'll probably just chill in the oak of ages. Just chill in the oak of ages. Yep, so that faction up there has declared war on me too. And we've got a population surplus in the King's Glade, so we're gonna go upgrade straight to a hollow and end the turn. Protect the Oak of Ages, my lord. Should it fall, the sacred forest will surely wilt away with it. I am protecting the Oak of Ages, advisor, but why do you say that? Is there some problems in the area I am not aware of? We'll see. We'll see. Bump straight up Assurance Command. Okay, guys, that's where I'm going to have to leave this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll, of course, try and carry this on as often as possible, but I work full-time, so I can't guarantee any dates. I'll try and get one out every couple of days as possible. But, yes, I do thank you for watching. Please leave a like if you did. It helps out massively. Leave a comment on what you think our plan of attack should be. Our economy isn't great. How do you think we should improve that without going off and kind of losing the campaign by getting the Oak of Ages destroyed. So we're going to have to be quite clever with this campaign. We can't just retake the Oak of Ages later on. Alright, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more. I've been Hacksaw Hunter. Bye-bye now.